Call to order the City Council briefing session for March 8th, 2021. Uh, Ms. Fister, would you call the roll? Council President Beggs? Here. Council Member Burke? Here. Council Member Cathcart? Present. Council Member Kinnear? Present. Council Member Stratton? Present. Council Member Wilkerson? Present. Let the record reflect that council member Mum is absent. All right, so that let's go to um, the briefing for the March 15th agenda. Mr. Ormsby. Thank you, council president and members of the council. Uh, the first item under the consent agenda is the annual value blanket for curb and valve boxes and Lauren Searle from the water department is here to bring this issue. This is a one-year uh, value blanket for curb and valve boxes with a possibility of up to five one-year renewals, not to exceed $100,000 per year. Any questions? Um, any questions? Okay, the next item is proposed purchases from fleet services and David Payne is not able to be with us today, but Clint Harris from Streets is here to uh, brief the two proposed purchases. Good afternoon, Council President and Council. For item 2A, the Street Department would like to purchase three Wausau snowplows. The snowplows will be purchased from Wausau Equipment Company, New Berlin, Wisconsin, using source well contract 080818-WAS for total purchase price of $66,682.74, including tax. Any questions? I have a quick question. It's Karen. So yes, is the, the reason that we didn't buy local because it's a sole source? Is that well, these are unique uh, equipment items, and so they're, they're purchased... Uh, from a company out of Wisconsin, but they, they aren't made locally. Is that the, the question, or is it because they're purchased from a local vendor? My question was just if there was a reason why we didn't purchase from a local vendor. Was yeah, they, they are. They're, they're, made, they're purchased using the source well contract, and, okay. and so, yeah, it's unfortunate. Okay, thank you. All right, for item 2B, the request, the street department would like to purchase a Timco air sweeper. The body will be purchased from Timco uh, Incorporated out of Spokane, Washington, using HGAC by contract number SW04-20 for total purchase price of $339,842.10, including tax. Any questions on that? Okay, and uh, then the other item that, uh, can I make the other item there? Uh, yes, uh, why don't you just continue? Okay, item number three on the agenda, the street department is seeking approval for the renewal of a bl value blanket contract for the purchase of sign blanks from National Barricade and Sign in the amount not to exceed $80,000. Any questions? I had a question on that. Oh, go ahead, Betsy. Thanks. I just want to clarity on sign blank. Um, exactly what is that? Those are the plates that we use to make signs with. We have an artist that uh, puts the overlay over the signs. Uh, we make a lot of our own signs within the department here that are needed. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Clint. Uh, item number four on uh, the consent agenda is a proposed contract uh, for the installation of ground and overhead construction of uh, new conduit uh, for uh, the fiber route from City Hall to the CCB. And Mike Sloan, the director of IT, is here to present this item. 
Thanks, Mr. Ornsby. Good afternoon, Council President Council. Item number four is a contract that was um, awarded through an RFP process. Um, we had to do the RFP a second time because last year when we were trying to get it completed is when COVID hit. And so we were unable to complete the RFP. So we reissued it. Um, three participants and out of that zero DB communications LLC Spokane was awarded um, the contract through the RFP process. Basically what this is, is a diverse fiber route to the CCB. Right now we have one single route uh, between City Hall and a couple locations and route to the combined communication center. This will give us a diverse path in the event um, one of them is dug up or, or exposed. We would maintain connectivity here at City Hall with the new data center we put at the CCB, asking for your approval for that contract to be pushed forward and uh, it will be completed this year. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, item number five is proposed memorandum of, of understanding between um, two neighborhoods on the South Hill for uh, to hang banners for neighborhood beautification and Carly Courtright is here to present this item. Good afternoon, Council. I briefed you on this back in December, if you can remember, uh, with the PICE Committee, and this was basically a no-cost agreement with Comstock and Cliff Cannon neighborhoods. They've developed some banners that they purchased through their community engagement grant dollars and this MOU is allowing for them to um, hang those banners off of city-owned poles. Thank you. Thank you, Carly. Uh, the oh, next two items are the placeholders that we... Mike, Mike can I just sorry. get this clarity? So, Carly, are we hanging them or are they hanging the banner? They are going to hang them. We are just allowing them to do so. The MOU stipulates that they will be responsible for hanging them. They just need to make sure with us that it is safe to do so. Okay, thank you. Okay, any, any other questions? Okay, uh, the final two items again are the placeholders. Uh, one is for claims and payments, uh, and those blanks will be filled in prior to uh, the next meeting. And the second uh, category of uh, Section 6 are payroll claims uh, that will be filled in uh, prior to the next meeting. And then the final placeholder is for the approval of city council meeting minutes, which will also be completed in advance of the meeting next week. Then we move to the legislative agenda, and there is only one item on the legislative agenda next week, and it is a special budget ordinance and Paul and Josie um, from the budget office is here to present this item. Thank you, Mike, and good afternoon, uh, City Council members. The SBO uh, scheduled for next Monday evening was at public safety on March 1st, and it is, uh, an, uh, it is an SBO to allow for the temporary reclassification of three firefighter positions, two firefighter dispatch positions, as well as consolidating fire dispatch positions in the proper. I'm happy to take any questions. Any um, questions for Paul? And I think this item has been discussed previously. Uh, that council president and members of the council uh, represents the proposed advance agenda for the meeting on March 15th. All right. Is there a motion to adopt that agenda? So moved. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the advance agenda for March 15th, 2021. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right. Advanced agenda is approved. Um, oh, I should have done this before, but it's okay. Uh, looking at tonight's agenda, a couple of things. One... The star-crossed bid for the Summit Boulevard Centennial Trail extension needs another week, according to staff. So that's item 10 on our uh, consent agenda. Is there a motion to defer that to March 15th agenda? So moved. Second. All right. So moved and Council President. Yes. If I can. Well, 
I, I'm really in, in fear of losing this funding, and I just don't know what we can do. But I, like, obviously we can't pass if we don't have somebody who's going to be able to do the contract bidding. But how can we move this faster? What can we do to get it through? Because I'm really in fear that we are going to lose this funding and we need this this connection. Yeah, I I don't see anyone on the call that could answer that, but my recollection of last week's discussion was that the staff is well aware of the um, right of it. Um, their, Council President, maybe I can add yeah. to that um, or Councilwoman Burke's question. Uh, we're aware that the funding needs to be expended this year, but the um, uh, staff uh, understands that if we're not able to award the bid within the next couple of weeks, then we'll have to rebid the project, but they believe they have enough time to put the project back out to bid again, evaluate the bids, and then uh, award the bid and still have the work completed during this construction season. So we understand that uh, the contractor, though, has some rights of appeal, and there's not much we can do to get DOT to expedite that appeal, and we can't reject the bids until the appeal process is complete. So we're kind of between a rock and a hard place, but we do believe that there will still be a way to complete the project this year. Any other discussion or questions? Council Member Stratton. I would just add Council Member um, Burke that this process with this particular um, project, it was um, a slower process because the neighborhood had some concerns so there was a lot of neighborhood input, and I believe the project eventually went to the design review committee. So it was kind of slow moving through this process, um, if, if that helps explain where we're at right now. Yep, but, but everyone is, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but I think everyone at the in the city government is 100%. Let's get this done. So I think we're all aligned on that. Um, all those in favor of deferring for one week to March 15th, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? All right. The other request I had was for item four. That's the uh, master site agreement with Avista on charging stations. And there was a, a recent email version of this, and there is we're looking for a motion to substitute what's in the current packet with the one that was emailed around. Was that today that was email? Emailed today. Council, oh, excuse me. I don't want to wish that on you, Mr. Piccolo. Mr. Piccolo, what's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just want to point out the main reason for the substitute is that when we met with the Park Board Land Committee they wanted more time to meet with the full park board and what additional park property sites may be involved, including golf courses. So at this point, they felt more comfortable having the agreement go forward just with the three partners, the library, the city, and the Vista, and then parks will come by later. We can do it by an addendum, or they can have their own standalone agreement where they can really lay out all the park sites that may be involved or could be involved. So that's the main reason. Thanks for that explanation. Is there a motion to uh, substitute the version that we'll consider when we consider the consent agenda? So move to substitute. Is there a second? Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the substitution indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Aye. Any abstentions? Okay, it is substituted. And just looking through the agenda, I don't see any other issues. So, uh, Madam Clerk, if you'd read the consent agenda as amended. Reports, contracts, and claims. Number one, purchase from Western States Equipment, Spokane of Caterpillar, H120, Hammer, and accessories, $63,056.21, including tax. Number two, contract extension and annual licensing fees with MBS Government Finance Group doing business as MBS Temecula, California. 
for DFAS 3 Local Improvement District System for the Treasury Services Department, $12,232.61, including tax. Total contract amount, $153,953.94. Item number three, amendment number one, to grant agreement with the Washington State Department of Ecology to purchase a dedicated hazmat equipment truck and hazmat equipment. Increase of $100,000. Total contract amount, $185,000. This item relates to Special Budget Ordinance C-36017, which will be considered during the 6 p.m. legislative session. Item number four, master site agreement with the Vista Corporation, City of Spokane, and Spokane Public Library for installation of required equipment for electric vehicle DC fast charging stations. Avista will be responsible for the installation and related cost as well as the cost of electricity for the stations. Item number five, contract amendment with OAC Services Incorporated, Spokane, to audit the construction contract for next level of treatment project at the Riverside Park Water Reclamation Facility, $253,634. Total contract amount not to exceed $433,104. Increase administrative reserve by $25,363 or 10%. Item number six, contract amendment numbers 21 through 25 with CH2M Hill Jacobs Engineers Incorporated, Spokane for engineering services for next level of treatment at RF Riverside Park Water Reclamation Facility, $571,333. Total contract amount not to exceed $25,723,348.96. Increase administrative reserve by $38,524 or 6.7%. Number seven, contract renewals with A Oracle America Incorporated, Dallas, Texas for license support to include updated subscription services and right to use Oracle licenses from April 21, 2021 through April 20, 2022, $207,462.82, including tax. B. Highland Software Incorporated, Westlake, Ohio, for annual software maintenance and support for the city's on-base document imaging system from April 1, 2021 through March 31, 2022, $68,041.67, including tax. C. Azteca Systems, LLC, Sandy, Utah, for City Works annual software maintenance and support for water and wastewater departments to manage public works infrastructure from April 1, 2021 through March 31, 2022, $135,036, including tax. Number eight, report of the mayor of pending claims and payments approved to approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through February 26, 2021. Total $8,597,165.27 with Parks and Library claims approved of the respective boards. Warrants excluding Parks and Library, total $7,345,803.20. Number nine, city council meeting minutes for February 22nd and February 25th, 2021. Item number 10 has been deferred to March 15, 2021 agenda. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as read, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any, aye. Oppo any opposed nay? All right, the consent agenda is approved. Uh, so that is going to do it for our agenda. Uh, just, we're going to have an executive session in a moment. I'll get to that in a moment, but just wanted to let you know that we have four proclamations tonight and a report from uh, Peaceful Valley neighborhood. Um, but uh, Mr. Ormsby, I believe you've requested that we um, adjourn to an executive session un uh, pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act exemption for considerations of litigation. Is that true? Yes. And please, how much? And we would. I think Council President think it would take uh, approximately 25 minutes. Okay. So then why don't we uh, go into executive session until 4.20 p.m.? The council doesn't anticipate any further action, and we'll come back at 4.20 and either announce the adjournment of the meeting or um, that we're extending it. With that, we'll see everybody else at 6 p.m. likely, and council members and appropriate staff go ahead and log into the link. All right, all right. We're done with the executive session, and uh, the meeting is over. So, gavel that to close. We'll see people back at six p.m. Thanks. <laughs>